continuing the trend of talking about chi-squared uh, over and over and over again. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about how we do hypothesis tests with the chi-squared independence test or the two-way chi-square. Let's do a quick review. You have two categorical variables. They can be ordered categorical or unordered. It doesn't matter. It works just fine for both. And they're measured in the same individual. So this had to be paired data. You can't have um, you know, one variable measured in one group of people and another variable in another group of people. That won't work. Both variables have to be measured in the same group of people. Each individual must have only one possible value on variable one and only one possible value on variable two. They can't be overlapping. So this has to be mutually exclusive data, just like for the goodness of fit test. And when we set up the data, it needs to be set up in a two-way contingency table, this two-way frequency table that we've seen before. And then, the, and then as soon as you get there, the computation is extremely similar to the chi-square goodness of fit test, but the setup and the interpretation will be different. The mechanics, once you get the table set up, are really similar, but the interpretation and the setup are very different. And there's a couple of details. So hypothesis testing, same deal. We have hypotheses. Let's talk about what those hypotheses are going to be. Let's talk about how it works. So we're always testing the question of whether as an association we see in the sample tells us about an association that might exist in the population. The null hypothesis is that there is no association between these two categorical variables in the population, and the alternative hypothesis is that there is an association. Now those things can be rephrased in terms of independence of the variables or dependence of the variables on each other. Because association is dependence, uh, lack of association is independent. So this is what our null hypotheses are always going to be. And we'll see these hypotheses again with numerical variables when we're doing regression and correlation. So going back quickly through the survey about policy changes, etc. Um, going back through this example, we can see that when there was dependence in the variables, we saw that the frequencies um, uh, the pattern of frequencies across, say, the rows depended on which column you were in, or the pattern of frequencies across columns depended on which row you were talking about. Another, and a quick way to think of that is that the lines are not parallel in front of you. So parallel lines means that the, in a graph like that, means that the um, variables are independent of each other, and non-parallel means they are dependent, that there is some association with each other. So looking at this example, we talked about when they're not, uh, when there is an association, when they're not parallel, the lines are not parallel, we can imagine people having a conversation and somebody saying how, somebody wanted to know about just one of the variables, wanting you to summarize one of the variables without talking about the other one. How angry would the students be about the policy changes? You can't answer that without looking at the individual policies. You have to say it depends. So the values or the patterns across the hypothetical anger variable depend on which level of the policy variable you're at. So you have to talk about the individual levels of the policy variable. Then we talked about a situation where it doesn't depend. The pattern across each of, uh, uh, across hypothetical anger is the same for, in, for all the three of the different policies. Therefore, it doesn't depend. Therefore, there is not an association. So what does a two-way chi-square tell us? It tells us whether, on average, one individual's variable A category valuable value here depends on that person's variable B category. I'm saying the same thing in multiple ways, hoping it kind of gets in a deep way. And if it does, if there's an association, then is the strength of that association strong enough to be unlikely if the null hypothesis is true? So up until now, We've been talking about just, is there an association or isn't there? Well, in the population, there is or there isn't. But in the sample, we don't know for sure, so we have to um, look at how strong the association is. If it's very strong, then you'll have a small p-value, right? And you, you will reject the null hypothesis. If it's very strong, then you would not expect that to happen in the sample unless there was definitely an association in the population. So it has to be strong given your sample size, etc. So in other words, is P less than alpha? Is the probability of seeing a relationship of this strength or stronger less than you know, 0.05 if there was truly no relationship in the population? 
And if that's unlikely, then we say then there must be an association in the population. There must be a relationship.